Hey guys, this is Roxanne Smithers with Smithers Law Group, your trusted 360 general counsel. And this is a note from my legal pad. So we're on part four of our five part series, the five questions you need to ask yourself if you are going to be a real estate investor. And you need to have the answers to these questions as well. So question four, how do I get my money out of this deal of a lifetime? So at the beginning of a real estate venture or opportunity that someone is presenting to you, they will tell you about all the prospects in terms of how much return you can get, what the homes in that area are going for, what the properties are going for, um, sort of selling an exciting opportunity. What they're not going to talk about very often is the downside. What can go wrong? Everyone assumes sunshine, but you have to be prepared for the rain. So in order to understand the way that you can actually benefit from, recoup from, or get out of this deal of the century, whether it goes well or it goes bust, it's what you do at the beginning of the project, before the money exchanges hands. One, if you're going to be a lender, you need to have a loan agreement and a promissory note. You need to make it clear in those documents whether this is a secured loan or it's unsecured. I always recommend secured, and it's secured by assets that you have identified, presumably the real estate that is the subject of the um, project, but it may be secured by other assets as well. When you're securing it by the assets, you want to check the title and make sure you know if if you are going to be the first in line in terms of a creditor, or if you are one of many people that this property has been used to secure a debt and that you're gonna to have to get in line behind everybody else that is um, owed money either on this project or projects in the past, okay? Next thing that you can do in that loan agreement and in your other partnership agreements is make sure that you have a right to get your attorney's fees and costs covered if there is a dispute down the road. This is a, a good provision to have in all agreements across the board, no matter what you're doing. And when you get that estimate from a lawyer of what something may cost to help you recoup when a deal goes bad, you'll understand why this provision is so critical and it's important. Now, the other way that you can make sure that you're securing your ability to get paid out on the deal or to recoup funds if there's a problem with the deal have your name on the deed um, and or have a security deed filed for this property. What that does is that's going to give you control, some control and say over what happens to the property. Many times I've had potential clients and clients come to me and part of the problem is they were promised that once a property was renovated and sold, they would receive either a portion of the proceeds from that sale or they'd receive back their loan or their investment plus some sort of return. And lo and behold, they find out that the property has been sold, but the check is not in the mail. Well, if your name is on the deed or you have a security deed filed for that property, that cannot happen, at least not legally and honestly, without you having notice and without your debt being paid out of the sale funds for that property. Um, usually what's gonna happen is a closing attorney, they're gonna run a title search, they're gonna see everyone who has an interest in that property, everyone who has a lien on the property, everyone who has any sort of claim related to that property. Find out the amount that's due and owed, and then those people are going to have to either be paid before the property can be sold or they're gonna be paid out of the proceeds from the sale of that property. And that allows for the new owner to take that property with a clean, clear title, okay? Um, so that's one reason. The other reason is if for some reason um, your borrower, your business partner defaults on their obligations to you, then you may have a basis to foreclose on that property force a sale of that property to then recoup your investment, your loan proceeds um, out of the proceeds from that, from that foreclosure and that forced sale, okay? So that's a loan agreement, name on the deed, security deed. 
If there's an entity that owns the property, then you also want to make sure that you have either a stock or an investment agreement with that entity showing that you have an ownership interest in what your stocks are. You may need stock certificates as well. And then you should have an ability to sell your stock. So you can maybe liquidate out of the investment um, out of that entity or depending on the terms in your agreement, you could force a buyout of your shares from the other owners. Operating a rating agreement, same thing, you're a party to that, you know what your interest is and how you can then sell your interest or force a buyback of your interest. Uh, so these are some of the key ways that you can secure at the beginning of a project so that you can make sure that you have a path to get out of a project or to get your return that's been promised to you or to get your payback from your loan. Um, whether a project has gone well or maybe the project has gone bust. So that's question four on our um, set of five part series. If you'd like more information about the attorneys at the Smithers Law Group, you can find us at stulawgroup.com. You can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram at Smithers Law Group. Always be sure to like and subscribe so that you get the latest notes from our legal pad.